Tonight Show. Tonight's music guest, Dave Somerville of the Diamond. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Red Midnight Show. Tonight's guest is a repeat guest, Dave Somerville from the Diamonds. And uh, there's a special story behind that. As you well know, this show only interviews artists, musical artists, songwriters, record producers. We're a pure musical show. And tonight with Dave is a, it's a special thing that's happening, and, and we're happy to have him here. Dave, good to see you, buddy. Good to see you. Yeah, thanks, Ray. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, well, it's uh, you know you're always a pleasure to to have anyway. Thank you. Sir. At least, in Dave, uh, you know I, I, I'm really you know because you were scheduled to come in June, you know, for us for a repeat show. But when I was contacted by uh, the people over at Snailworks, and uh, they told me they were releasing this uh, new album of yours, which is is based upon the. Uh, PBS show that you did some years ago that has over two and a half million hits on it. So this is sort of exciting for me because I understand it's about uh, your trip on the bus. So, so what's the title of the album? Uh, the title of the album, On Snow Wars, is on the 1957 Rock and Roll Greyhound bus with Diamond Dave Summer. Shall I tell you what it's about? Well, I would love to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but by the fall of... Uh, uh, 1957, the Diamonds were eight hits deep. We were still four blue-eyed, semi-virgin white guys from Toronto and brown three-line suits. But despite that, we were invited to John Rock and Roll's first major touring show. Really? With the, those were the, the first tour? Well, the first tour was really the first, the first major tour, yes. Oh, no kidding. I, I, I was aware of it at the end of the first tour. I didn't know that you were on that tour. Yes, yes. yes. There were That's uh, exciting. a dozen... Uh, Pioneer jukebox giant acts, uh, Fats Domino, Chuck Berry, uh, The Drifters, Five of Shadows, uh, Frankie Bobby. Wow, what a lineup that was. Paul Anker, uh, Mike Eddie Cochran. That was what Paul had here, I right? guess. Yes. Buddy Knox, uh, the Emily Brothers, uh, Buddy Holly and the Tickets, the Down of the Church, and I'm uh, uh, not going to forget the, the Queen of our Greyhound. Little Richard. No, no, no. no. It was Laverne Baker. She shot the Red Mall shot. Wow, what a lineup that was. Yeah, it was phenomenal. Jukebox, I mean, uh, forget it. We spent uh, 60 days together uh, barnstorming North America, having a fabulous time and uh, making what turned out to be historic music. Well, there's no question about it. That was history and, and totally in the making. So tell me about now. The bus itself seems to play some very important a part in this. Am I right about that? Well, yes. Uh, aside from the fact that uh, it did its job beautifully taking us from town to town, uh, it was a bus designed in 1939, not built until 1947, when the materials were available after World War II, and it had some it had some special uh, features. It had air conditioning. <laughs> oh, and, 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 that and it had I like that was after World War II. Okay, yeah, we never used that though. It was late, late fall, you know. Right. And it had, uh, it had curtains. And uh, what it really needed, of course, was a restaurant. Yeah. And it didn't have a restaurant. Now, yeah. let me, who built this bus? Well, it was a Greyhound. Oh, it was a Greyhound bus. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, even, that's even more uh, historical because there's not too many of these Greyhound buses around. Now, was that the original bus? I understand. I saw the CD. And they rushed a picture of it yeah. over to me on uh, on my computer. Right. Uh, was that the original bus? Well, that is a, a copy of the. Uh, the it was one of the original uh, silver signs that Greyhound made in the late forties. I see. Well, very interesting. Plus, uh, I mean, why don't we just call it the musical bus? Because believe me, that was uh, right. that kind of a lineup that you had. That was a nice well, thing. Yeah. Now, tell me about. It. I'm sure there's plenty of stories that took place on that uh, that uh, that tour. So oh, yeah. I'm sure you got you know, a lot of uh, you know <laughs> under the hat kind of a little, yeah. and, and some tidbits that probably a lot of people don't know anything about. And I'm sure that our audience here today would certainly love to hear about the news. You know, you know, something you can uh, tell us about. Well, the, the album is, is exactly that. It's, it's road stories, and, and I personally sing the hit songs of each of the acts that I travel with. Oh, how interesting. And, uh, yeah. So are you, is it a medley, or are you just in, introduce each guy, or you really do it? Essentially, I will, too. For instance, I will say, as we get out of the bus, uh, the, the first person we recognize is the guy sitting right behind the driver. 
It was an amazing singer, songwriter, duck water known as Chuck Berry. Let him drive! Let him drive, absolutely. Well, actually, I'm glad I'm glad it was uh, Carl Benson's <laughs> I never remember that all the time. Thank you, sir. Uh, well, he didn't have anything to do with the show or anything. He was just no, 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 no. He was, oh. he was the bus driver. But uh, uh, during the, uh, the two months that we traveled together, sometimes uh, Chuck would borrow my acoustic guitar. Yeah. And he would scotch tape the bus driver's microphone in the on position. <laughs> and he'd stick it inside the guitar to make it louder. And we'd have some sing-alongs that would uh, as good as some of the shows. Just give us a little bit of broad yeah. And that's what I do. It's all the words for me. Telling the songs of the artist about whom the story has just been told. Oh, fantastic. Hey, that's fantastic. It's got to be great. Uh, but I mean, I know the PBS show was very successful. Uh, I mean, with downloads, I mean, that, that had almost two and a half million. Well, not downloads, it's actually uh, people just watching the show and two and a half minutes viewing it. I do only wish it was downloaded. But, uh, uh, but anyway, let me ask you this. I mean, uh, uh, with the show itself, was that part of it, or did you edit the CD, or did you re-record some stuff off of that? Or? All of the songs of those various artists, I sing myself. Yes, I understand. So it's that. essentially a one-man show with backup. Uh -huh. and, uh, and, and our CD on the 1957 Rock and Roll Greyhound Bus it is a live show. It's one oh, performance. It's one performance. One okay. performance. Okay. So you did this live, this yeah. whole thing. At the, at the Academy of Television yeah. Arts and Sciences. In the North Oh, wonderful, yeah. wonderful! Man, I, I I can't wait to uh, hear the CD. I mean, I have seen the show on PBS, yeah. and it's it's a fabulous show. But this is a little bit more, I think, uh, intriguing sense that you can listen to it at home and use your imagination and imagine what some of the stories were like with some of those guys. I mean, you said Chuck Berry, but. Uh, how was uh, uh, Paul Anker on that? Was he a Mr. Quiet guy? Or? Uh, Paul and, uh, and and Frankie Lyman slept in the luggage rack, one on each side of, of the bus, about halfway down. <laughs> <laughs> Frankie was, was, on, was on the left, and, uh, and Paul was on the right. Well, not everybody could make it up into that. I mean, for instance, Fats Domino. Well, I don't think so. A lot of them. Yeah, I mean, I, as a kid, luggage. I used to go see Fats Domino myself at all the places sure. in New Orleans, so... Uh, I can imagine what that was like, and then you had, uh, of course, you had Buddy Holly. I mean, yes. those guys were. Well, I, I mean, I, that's 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 history as, as itself. Now, tell me, when you were on that tour, was this the tragic uh, tour? Or the, no, 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 it wasn't. So, in other words, there was uh, a, a tour after that, uh, where, where Holly and them took the plane. Well, oh, this, this the, the the tour of which we speak uh, took place in the fall of 1957. Uh, the tour on which uh, Buddy. The fateful tour, uh, which uh, Buddy and the Big Bopper uh, uh, traveled along with Richie Bellows, happened. That was in February of '59. Oh, really? So it was uh, a couple years later when that tour went off. And for some reason, I was associating it with that. But I guess there was more than one major rock and roll tour, I'm assuming. Well, the same promoter, actually. Really? Yeah. Urban Urban, Urban Feld, who later bought uh, Barnum Brothers, uh, Ring Ringling Brothers, Barnum Brothers Circus. Wow, what a good story there! That makes all sense yeah. too. But you didn't, uh, you didn't travel with the circus or anything. Right? <laughs> no. And uh, one of the best parts about traveling on that bus for me was sitting in the seat next to Buddy Holly. Oh, I can imagine. I'm sure you had some great stories and uh, well, we, along we, with that. We, 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 How was he, by the way? I mean, it was yeah, kind of a nice, quiet kid, or uh, yeah, he was fairly quiet. Although well, he did have a bit of a of a wild side. We talked about whatever whatever came up during that. Yeah, that tour. Uh, like one one of the questions that was asked, I remember, was how long do you think rock and roll is going to last? Good, like good, a, uh, good, good question. Did you ask that to him, or he well, asked that to you? That, that was just generally a, a subject of conversation. But I remember him saying to me on one occasion, six months. I hope you're wrong, Dave. I think rock and roll is for three years. <laughs> you're basically, uh, you're basically. Uh, uh, you know, trying to predict the end of rock I, and roll. I'm yeah. sure he would be surprised at how long rock and roll has lasted, and uh, in particular his songs. Well, his songs are still uh, still alive today. Yeah. And we hear them uh, all the time on the radio, and right. many many artists try to uh, mimic him. Uh, you know, uh, along with that fast uh, drum beat. That, well, he was the originator of it. So, but you know, you can't take anything away from Chuck Berry and the rest of those guys. No. They wrote some fabulous material. Uh, you know, of course, um, 
in, in your case, but I mean, your first hit was not Little Darling, if I know. No, uh, it was Water Hills Fall in Love. Yes. Uh, uh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. we had 16, uh, 16 hits between uh, 56 and uh, 61. Yeah, I, re I uh, remember that. I think I bought that myself. Uh, well, uh, I don't know whether it was on 78 or was it on 45. I can't remember. Both. It was on both. So yeah, well, it goes back to show you the yeah. music industry <laughs> finally upgraded themselves and put it on the <laughs> yeah. eventually. Yes, yeah. yeah. but. Uh, yeah, I, 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 you know, I knew that uh, you, you had more, more hits of before Little Darling, but Little Darling, I believe, was your, is your signature. Oh, uh, well, absolutely. It was the third biggest hit of 1957. Right underneath uh, Love Letters in the Sand by Pat Boone, and of course Elvis was the number one place where it all shook up. And, and Elvis is the reason we didn't get the number one uh, in the spring of 57. We got the number two and stayed there for eight weeks, the exact same eight weeks that Elvis was at number one with all she could. Wow, that's very that's an interesting story. That's a little piece of uh, yeah. little piece of history there as yeah. well. But uh, when Little Darling came along, I, I, of course we all remember that, and it's still very popular today with uh, acts that uh, are performing in clubs when they want to go back and do a retro. Little yeah. Darling is always included. I know as recently I was in, in Vegas at the uh, one of the lounge there, one of the lounge acts was uh, performing Little Darling. I had to laugh, of course, uh, it's interesting. I don't know if you know it, but I was also uh, the publisher of Little Darling. I knew that. I And the monster was a writer for our company. Lovely giant. Yes. yes. Always good for Maurice to uh, have a big hit like that. And occasionally we work together. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, usually he. Uh, the way it's set up on the, on the shows that we've done, we've probably done, I don't know, maybe eight or ten shows together. And uh, what I do is uh, introduce Little Bob, sing the first verse of it, essentially, then call him up, he does the talking, oh, part, wow. and then we finish up together. You know, Dave, I have never seen that uh, that particular combination of the two of you. I've seen your shows and yeah. so forth, except you and uh, Michael Lewis together. I have seen that. Well, anyway, Dave, let me uh, just ask you another couple of couple of questions. Um, uh, with this tour now that you uh, with the bus, uh, how long did that last? I mean, well, it was a ninety day tour. We did about sixty days. Of it. But my question is also, did they did you come up and do another tour after that? This was fifty seven, right? Fifty seven. Yes, we did another tour in fifty eight, a longer tour. This time with seventeen acts, and uh, that was an album free. Oh wow, I remember Alan Freed very well. Sure. Did you all have big posters and made like that you had all over yeah. the place with these? Wow. Yeah. I'd love to get one of those. Yeah. That's a collector's item to live in itself. So uh, so you did basically the year of uh, 1957 and 58, you were mainly mostly on tours, so did you play a lot of clubs with uh yeah. on, uh, yeah, with both. The, yeah. Did you all do, yeah. Television, clubs, recording. And on T V shows, what uh, T V shows did you uh, happen to appear on? Was Dick oh, Clark, I'm sure, was oh, one we of them. We did Dick Clark probably a couple of dozen times. We did uh, Steve Allen a few times. Uh, we did a month of mornings with uh, Arthur Godfrey. And we also did his evening show. Arthur oh, Godfrey. But uh, Steve Allen was a very, very special guy. And uh, we did Patty Page's show. Uh, did you do Ed Sullivan? No, we didn't. We, it was offered to us twice, but the timing just didn't work out. Oh, well, it's a shame. That was a big show. A big show that pushed it, you know, Ed Sullivan then busted off the Beatles. Yeah, and we actually, we actually uh, sang on the, the Vaughn Monroe show. Oh my God. There's a next time. Vaughn Monroe, what are you going to do? Also, Dave, listen, it's, it's always a pleasure to have you here. But, you know, at the end of our show, we always play a good run of the, uh, of the music from, or mm -hmm. of the pit head from the CD, which we will be doing with yours, there's no question about it. And, uh, you know, we do thank you for coming. You know, I noticed today that, you know, uh, you have a nickname known as the Double Shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like the Double Shirt. I noticed you're wearing two shirts today, so it's, uh, well, thank you. yeah, that's right. But, uh, it's chill easy. Yeah, well, is that what it is? Yeah. But I understand that so much stuff goes up in the Hollywood Hills anyway that you, you over your property overlooks the Coanga Pass where all the uh, bandits used to That's work. right. That's yeah. right. Tiburcio Vasquez used to hang out here. Uh, did he play any musical instruments? Did you know of anything? No, no. but uh, 
uh, he didn't go on to do it, did he? He killed uh, three guys. He did. And, and on that occasion, those those fellows had to face the music. That's, that's a story. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's a pleasure, always a pleasure, buddy. <laughs> Come back and see us again. Come, let's roll. Let's roll across the floor.